Welcome back to We Do Pay It Forward. Please welcome Anila. She is the president and CEO of the Center for the Newcomer, a truly compassionate leader who is an inspiration to the Calgary community. Welcome, I'm Milena Radakovic, and this is We Do Pay It Forward. I'm here with Anila Lee Young, president and CEO from the Center for the Newcomers. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to hear about your story and your journey. And the one thing that I find fascinating is when you told me you lead by candor. What do you mean that how you leave by candor? What does that mean? Well, you know, I think it's, it's not something that I came up with myself, right? When I say that I lead by candor, it's something that I started to hear more and more as my leadership journey um, increased, I think. And what I've come to understand is that people that genuinely, I think, like me and think that the work that I'm doing is good um, will say, oh, Neela, you lead with candor because they don't want to say, you're kind of aggressive and bitchy and kind of scare me, right? And so, you know, like, I think, I think that that's like a polite and kind yeah. of a kind way for people to say that um, I'm not willing to take your shit. And, you know, love and it. that's how, how I, 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 I think I lead. Yeah, I love that. So we have a variety of different listeners. So we have some startup entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, to business leaders and established entrepreneurs who've had lots of experience. Now, with your business style, which I, I have to say, I love that because I always hear men are aggressive, women are more timid. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit of how through your journey as a business leader, has anything changed or you've gone through a struggle that has put you um, as this courageous, amazing leader? Oh my goodness, you know, absolutely. You know, when I think when I first really started off and I first got that kind of like head title, right? Like the, what my team calls a big boss lady, like <laughs> I'm the CEO, right? When I first got that title, um, I, I admit it all the time, I would go home crying. I would cry all the time because people would just say mean things to me, people would gossip, people would, you know, and I would just be thinking, like, I just had very thin skin. And everyone just kept telling me basically to man up. And I was like, what does that even mean? I'm a woman, mm -hmm. right? Identify as a woman. What, what does that even mean? And I, I couldn't really understand that and, you know, get thicker skin. I was like, okay, well, how? And over time, I learned a few things. One, of course, it's really important to find women that can be your mentors, that can mm -hmm. be your friends, that can be that group that you can, you know, com comrades that you can share things with, but also to find the experts that can help you along the way. So I have what I call my pit crew, right? I'm a high performance person. I have a pit crew and that includes, I have a mental health counselor. I have my family doctor. I have my martial arts instructors. I have four of them right now, wow. right? I have um, a massage therapist. I have a naturopath. You know, I, I have, um, a, I think I said mental health counselor, which is really important. I have an executive coach. All of these people have helped me on my journey in terms of how I de-stress how I look at the world and how I ground myself in, in my confidence, right? And, and I, I also seek friendships, relationships, family even, that are going to be supportive of this, right? If I didn't have a partner, my spouse, mm -hmm. who really thinks it's great when I'm kicking ass, right? <laughs> like he thinks it's the best thing in the world, right? Um, if I didn't have that support, I might not feel so confident, right, in, in being able to do those things. And so for me, the confidence comes from um, creating a network of, of people that are supportive so that I can actually be my true self and I'm not crying when I go home anymore. Because at, I, I worked so hard with my pit crew for so many years to develop myself, so now when people say things, my response is, I actually don't care. I love it. I love it. You know, that's one of the things uh, we do that we're all about is creating an ecosystem of supporters for women in business and women leaders. And one of the things I always say, number one, try to get a mentor. And, yeah. and we're also mm -hmm. trying to get a, a program together at We Do. Have a coach, uh, a personal coach or a business coach and supporters. And like you said, it could be on the personal side, friendship, uh, other uh, business people, uh, 
fantastic. I absolutely love all the tips you gave us. Thank you. Is there um, an accomplishment that you're most proud of? Uh, I personally think I know it because that's how we met, but I want to hear from you. What is the biggest accomplishment today that you have? You know, um, when we talk about business, I think the biggest accomplishment is, um, you know, I work in the not-for-profit sector. And of course, we're always competing for funding. We're competing for donations. We're competing for everything with other organizations. And when I started uh, as a CEO seven years ago, uh, the sector that I work in, which is the settlement sector, working in helping newcomers, was quite uh, disjointed. People weren't necessarily working together and there was a lot of competition. And so I think what I'm the most proud of is over that course of the seven years, um, I was able to help facilitate what we now call the Calgary Newcomers Collaborative, which is all of the settlement agencies working together. I am so um, privileged to be able to chair this. And along the way, all of those other CEOs have become my good friends, right? We know each other's partners' names. We know each other's children's names. We, Wonderful. you know, we go on fishing trips together. I don't fish, <laughs> but like, you know, like, but I went because we were going on a fishing trip together, right? Like we do all these different kinds of things and, and just getting to know each other and be supportive. And so for me, you know, there's, there's many things that we've been able to accomplish, but the accomplishment really was to be able to put aside our own individual egos, our own organizations, and really think about the greater good of the community. I love that. That is yeah. fantastic. So would you say um, creating a, a system of other supporters, uh, be it a non-for-profit or your business, that you can bounce ideas from would be a great uh, opportunity for uh, new, uh, newcomers, new businesses, new business leaders as well as entrepreneurs? Oh, absolutely. You know, the larger you can make your network and your pit crew and the people that are gonna support you. And then, you know, I, I think it's human nature. When we support other people and when we give back, we just feel good about ourselves, right? Because then you have a higher purpose than just whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. When you help other people accomplish their goals, it just makes everything so much better. So absolutely. And I, I love that because we had uh, another speaker who talked about leading with purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important that any leader out there uh, finds out what is their purpose. And I always believe a purpose and passion are two different things. Yes. Yeah. And so if another thing that a lesson learned, um, like you have a quite a big team. Mm -hmm. How um, do you lead through, uh, as you as you mentioned, uh, each department the, equally the same way, or do you find that you have to put different hats on as a leader? Oh, 100%, right? And not only within the, my own departments, right? Like I have 300 staff that are, that are working on multiple different portfolios and helping multiple different community members and different things. And you've got many different personalities at play. You've got many different leadership styles, many different ways of looking at things. And for us, almost all of the people are newcomers themselves at some point, right? So you've got a big mashup of many different cultures and how you work in in you know in 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 community and what you do and how you talk to each other. So it's it's really important to um, in these kind of uh, environments to spend more time actually listening and less time talking, right? And I think that that's been the most important growth opportunity for me, is to really listen to and to spend time, again, getting to know and building trust relationships with all of the team. I love that. So listening and gaining trust, those are really good tips mm -hmm. for any business leader. Mm -hmm. In your business right now, is are there struggles that you're going through? Oh, a hundred percent. You know, I think one of the things that we're dealing with right now is we're kind of in that post COVID recovery, mm -hmm. depending on who you talk to, whether it's over or not, right? And not debating that, but we're in this space and, and I hear it from everyone in the not-for-profit sector and I hear it in the corporate world and, and other places and spaces as well, is that we spent so much time, you know, over two years, basically in isolation, right? And we, forgot almost how to work in teams again yes. and how to work in public spaces again right. and what to do right and and how to interact and and even just uh how to slow down and do things because you could be at your computer from like seven in the morning till seven at night and just bang things out but now we're interacting more with people and that's important and so so i think 
my biggest struggle right now is um, first it was a struggle for me and I had to figure out how to adjust and my pit crew was really great in helping me do that and now it's how do I take what I've been able to do to stay calm, to be de-stressed, to, to look at things and be able to help my team also see things in stride and not kind of pile on to the stress that was COVID and then it's just been a continuation of that. How do we actually just kind of come back into a new normal? And is there something different that you have done uh, since COVID oh. to, as a leader to your team? 100%. I mandated once a month that we have an active living day that's mandatory for everyone to attend. So yeah, so we'll go outside, we'll be active, we'll do something active. Uh, we've done you know, self-defense classes, we've done some dancing, we've um, learned some indigenous drumming, some different types of things that would be, that are active and can get people kind of out of that stress zone. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Anila. One of the things that you audience don't know is I had the pleasure of meeting Anila last fall at the Top 100 Most Powerful Women Awards. So we both were top 100 most powerful women leaders. I was in the community impact and Anila was one of the top CEOs of Canada. So please reach out to her if you want to learn anything else about the Centre for Newcomers at... At centerfornewcomers.ca or you can find us on any of our socials. So I have one last question. What female leader that you look up to or inspires you? Our Lieutenant Governor. Sama Lakani. She, I, you know, I look up to her, I see, you know, 12 year old me can't even imagine that a woman that looks like me, similar background than me, same religion as me, is now leading our province. Like it just blows me away. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next speaker. Thank you to our sponsor, Dream Reach Achieve, for paying it forward and supporting women leaders and entrepreneurs. If you are inspired and want to join the We Do community, then go on wedocanada.com and also nominate and sponsor the next inspirational woman.